In today's video, you'll learn about grants management software, what it is, and how it can help your social impact program. We explore how to know when it's time to invest, how to get buy-in, and what to look for when you're researching. Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to The Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tips to help them scale and grow their CSR and goodness programs. So I've got a very special guest today. Her name is Claire Bruca, who she manages the community global community initiatives for MyTech. Thank you very much, Claire, for joining us today. Thank you so much, Carl. Great to be here. Today we're talking about grants management software, and let's take it, so Claire, let's take it right from the beginning. What is grants management software and how can it help your social impact programs? Sure. It's a great question. So on a basic level, I'd say grants management software offers funders a technological solution to help manage grants, funding, accreditation of nonprofits, et cetera. Um, and I would say most grant management software today supports a few key things, um, including the assessment process for a grant, often by a review panel, and ultimately allowing funders to make decisions against a set of funding criteria. So those are the basic tenets of what grant management software can do. So for any company or business that's, you know, that has a, an, either an established social impact program or, you know, one that's getting up and running, is it something that's required right away or is it something that you need once you have your grants program kind of um, more established? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say it's definitely not required right away. Um, grant management software is something that um, I wouldn't necessarily take lightly. Um, it does take some time to implement, but then also takes capacity to maintain. Um, and so if you're not necessarily clear about the tenants of your program, if you're not clear necessarily, again, about the metrics that you're using, those things can start to catch up with you. Um, and it's best, I think, to have a little bit more preparation in that. So I'd say take it slow and steady um, and choose grant management, man grant management software when um, you know you have the capacity and desire to really commit to social impact um, with a measurable lens. So when you say you uh, capacity, does that mm. mean more than one? Like, so, so let's say your program is you're, you're a solo practitioner in a business. Do you need more than one? Like, could you run grants management software by yourself? I believe that you don't need to necessarily have more than one person in order to run your grant management software. And that's the beauty of software that helps a person manage grants. Um, really, it actually can serve to build your capacity. And if I think it's done right, meaning the software and the technology provides an individual with the right capacity, and you have a professional that has passion and knowledge of what they're doing, that mix really allow for, I think, a very lean program to function effectively. So how do you know it's time uh, for your business to invest in this type of software? Oh, it's a hard decision, Carl. <laughs> we took some time uh, to make that. And I would say there are probably a few key things um, to look for. One, growing pressure from stakeholders. This could be company team members, it could be customers, et cetera. And really the pressure is around driving positive change in your markets, in your communities. And so if that pressure is there, it means that you have to have good processes, good structure, good infrastructure in order to make that change, right? I'd say also, if you want to scale your program locally or globally, that's probably a really good signal that suggests you might need some additional capacity to help you do that. Um, and then honestly, <laughs> it seems kind of simple, but when your administrative tax related to a grants program, like reviewing and processing grant requests, for example, become overwhelming or disorganized, that can be a really significant flag that says, we need to actually aggregate this information in one place we need to be able to have more efficient processes and streamline our system. Is there like an amount? So mm -hmm. like an amount that you, your, your program is, is um, working with in terms of the amount of grants or the number of companies that your or initiatives that you're working with, is there sort of like a bar that 
hey, we really need the software now because there's no way, let's say a spreadsheet can can handle yeah. this? Or yeah, is it that's just kind of more based on like your, um, I would say like your capacity? I want to say it's a yes and, which is, <laughs> which I know is probably a dissatisfying answer to some individuals, but um, I think it is truly understanding your own capacity as a professional and knowing what your full, full scope of your job is. If you are solely a grants professional and that is all that you do, um, I think potentially you could kind of go one way or another, um, no matter how many grants you manage. That being said, the depth of your program also influences that. So if you have, let's say, 100 grantees, but you do maybe more of a traditional form of uh, philanthropy where it's much more of a cut a check and that's a more of a transactional relationship, potentially you don't necessarily have to have a large lift but you have a large number of grantees or cause partners. Whereas if you have more uh, relationship-based grant making, if you have deeper relationships with these nonprofits or causes, um, it might actually require a larger lift for smaller amount of grantees or dollars going out. So it's really kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. Um, but for us at MyTech, we actually had um, a relatively small amount of cause partners that we are working with, um, which for us allowed us to more ease and phase into this process. It really enabled us to um, take the time we needed to onboard a select number of causes that we have had legacy relationships with. And then in the phases that will be to come, um, then onboard new cause partners with a refreshed understanding of our grant process. Now let's talk about getting buy-in. How how does somebody or how does, you know, your team get buy-in for grants management software and kind of maybe explain how you did it at my tech? Well, uh, like any other project, I mean, I think buy-in is extremely important. Um, identifying your stakeholders, defining what their level of anticipated investment is going to be is pivotal. Are you working with board members of a corporate foundation, senior executives? Um, do you have a corporate communications team that needs to be involved? Who are your main stakeholders who are going to be integral parts of not only the implementation process, but the onboarding process of these nonprofits? I would say also making sure you set a timeline from implementation, understanding what other demands you have for the year. These are all really pivotal um, elements to understanding, you know, how you present this opportunity and ultimately get buy-in. So understanding when I said the opportunity, it's really understanding the value, like I said as well, to stakeholders, um, not just getting feedback, but incorporating that feedback from these stakeholders as you go through this implementation process around um, a grant management system. At MyTech, what we ended up doing in order to get buy-in and investment from stakeholders um, was reviewing our current processes around our grant program. And again, we're a newer program. So our processes were kind of loose, but we needed to define them a little bit more. And so we really identified gaps within that process and also within our team's capacity. And then we not only focused on the clarity of that need, but also on the inclusion of those stakeholders in the process. So for example, after our team um, uh, identified the need for the additional capacity through a grant management system, we spent a few months actually drafting an RFP for a grants management solution. And it might seem a little kind of intensive, but uh, again, I wanted to make sure we were super thorough with our process. And so we specifically asked our legal team, our communications team, our finance team, our IT teams, representatives from each one of those functions to provide feedback within their areas of expertise, <clears throat> setting up opportunities for them to speak with um, all of the potential vendors, including Benevity, um, and receiving product demos, et cetera, from all of our top choices. So as detailed as this process was, it allowed us to truly develop a better understanding of both our technological needs, but then also the capabilities of these software solutions. So that for me was one of the pivotal 
elements of getting buy-in from stakeholders was not having this be a siloed process, but truly being inclusive and getting their feedback, incorporating it in and moving forward with that knowledge. There's always one um, topic that keeps coming up whenever I talk about getting mm-hmm. buy-in for, for programs, and that's the concept of demonstrating uh, return on investment. So mm-hmm. is there a big component of when you're developing your strategy to show to, I guess, to leadership that this program or the software will actually provide some sort of um, return on investment in terms from a business perspective? Or is that something mm. that is a little bit beyond scope? You know, I think that that's a really pivotal part of any sort of buy-in process is that concept of ROI. Um, when you're first starting out, especially in at the stage that we were at, it's not like we had a baseline of knowledge of our impact and then could anticipate the changes that were inevitably going to be made by incorporating a grant management system externally. Internally was really our focus. And so the return on investment for us was had a strong internal lens first, and then the knowledge that as we continue to grow and mature as a company, um, or excuse me, as a function, that the impact on our communities was where that deep return on investment was going to be seen is that we're actually able to empower applicants and grantees to submit their own applications, right? We have more integrated tools to enable us to budget more effectively and keep track of our expenditures and where they're going and why they're going there, making better decisions, incorporating more people into that, and then also measuring our results ultimately. But as I mentioned, we were not as focused on the measurement of impact results at the time because of where we were in the maturation process of our grant program. So when you're researching different, you know, when you're talking about your RFP, what do you look for when you're researching Mm -hmm. um, grants management software? Like what are some of your criteria for successful software? Yeah, there can be many. (laughs) Those RFPs were long. Uh, So I appreciated every single company that filled those out and took the time to really um, provide um, thoughtful responses. I'd say there are a handful of things that we really called out that were important to us. First and foremost, which feels like it doesn't even have to be said, but I'm going to say it, is background and experience in providing grant management solutions um, for corporate funders in particular. We ran into a handful of vendors that were specialized in family foundations or private foundations, and it just has a different, um, there's a different need set when it comes to a corporate foundation and a corporate giving program um, like we are. I would say a knowledge of best practices goes along with that, understanding regulatory standards, innovative solutions in the space, um, international grant making, knowledge and expertise that again moves into that um, kind of donation capabilities of cause vetting, due diligence, grant disbursement on an international scale. That was extremely important to us. Um, The capability as well to deliver technology that's customizable. Um, I think that for every company, you have to consider what your personal needs are. And um, so for us to get a cookie cutter, a grant system was not going to work. We knew that based upon our level of maturation and our desire to create specific kinds of impact in our communities where we live, work, and play, we were going to need to be able to have some flexibility flexibility and individualization with this particular platform. So I'd say those things were pretty high language capabilities. We're a global company. We need to be able to Um, meet that need. Uh, That also speaks to our lens of equity um, that we incorporate into our grant process. And so that was, I would say, a high priority for us. I would, you know, price, of course. I mean, I would would be remiss to not mention that. Um, We are, after all, a a company that likes to make sure that we steward our resources appropriately. Um, And so making sure that we have um, an effective pricing model that we're working with is uh, also pretty important. 
Now you were talking about specialization, would hmm. you like for, for different, obviously for different companies, um, their granting program would be specialized. So let's say for example, um, the way that, that one company would research from a local level, that would probably be different than like someone like uh, a company like my tech mm. who's more on a global scale, right? Like the, the difference in research would be, would there would be a difference in research in terms of a smaller company, more localized versus a global company, right? Absolutely. Yes. Um, when it comes to global giving it, the amount of risk increases, mm. Um, and that's something that particularly for a corporate giving program where the dollars are coming directly from our company and not from even an external, uh, entity like a foundation or 501c3, um, that's important for us to make sure that we stay completely above board and are giving to organizations that have good reputations and are practicing, um, their work. Uh, in line with the standards of what I would say the IRS would uphold. So we really invested um, a lot of our stock when looking at our RFPs, for example, and the the answers that came from these uh, vendors into how well-versed they were in helping a company navigate the nuances of international giving. Can they not only provide recommendations, which is so valuable to have that kind of mind share, but then also be able to actually follow through with um, the vetting process and due diligence in a way that instills deep confidence, um, where if I say I would love to fund you know, a certain cause in, uh, South Africa, for example, you know, our hometown, or excuse me, our, our um, uh, headquarters is in Missouri, right? We don't necessarily have boots on the ground in um, Johannesburg, uh, where we'd like to offer a grant to a cause. So how do we actually best understand the organization that we're about to partner with? That's extremely important for us um, to be able to confidently maintain our reputation and brand um, across all of our global markets. So I'd say that would be a really important consideration set um, for any global company. Uh, if you're local, I think it is also important to have that as part of your grant program as well. Um, but I think it's a little bit easier to figure out if an organization is in good standing with the IRS, if you are saying local and based in the United States, that is. Um, so there are different layers of um, knowledge that you can get from organi organizations. Um, and we're just really grateful to have Benevity and all of the resources that are provided through the Benevity Grants platform at our fingertips. So prior to, to adopting grants management software, how did you run, how did you run your program at MyTech? Mm, it's a great question. Um, MyTech has always been a generous company. We've given of our time, our talent, and particularly in this case, our treasure to organizations in the places where MyTech team members live, work, and play. Despite that big heart of our company, we were solely relying upon more, I would say, antiquated, or if not antiquated, error-prone systems, um, like using Excel sheets, which I'm not knocking Excel sheets, but they do um, uh, ha ask a bigger lift of someone. Um, we also were using personal emails that served as application, review, and confirmation of a grant to a cause. Um, these mechanisms, they technically worked. They were not the most efficient nor reliable though. So that was the approach that we took um, to connecting with the nonprofit community and helping to support causes. So now that we have... Um, you know, implemented Benevity Grants, we recognize as well that 
we also needed a grant rubric to help us even with that process as well. So we weren't ha we haven't been able to incorporate that yet because it's new, we're really excited, um, into the actual application itself. But we do have an internal grant rubric now that sort of acts as a good pairing with the Benefit Grant System that allows our team to use a framework for evaluating the level of strategic alignment that a potential partnership or grant with a cause um, can provide and so those kinds of consistent and sustainable funding decisions across our global footprint um, are being enabled more and more because we have these types of systems that are just ready to go and can just, again, increase our capacity of such a lean team. So can you tell me more about like, how, so how did you personally get into the world of corporate granting? I started all of my background in social work. Um, I received my master's degree in international community development and intended to work actually as a clinical social worker with immigrants, refugees, new Americans. Um, and through a series of research projects, internships, et cetera, I realized that I had an interest in the relationship between causes and the funding community, specifically the power dynamics and influence of diversity, equity, and inclusion within the framework of traditional philanthropy and how that changes when you start to think about new innovative ways to do grant making. So I began working for an organization that, after I got in my master's program, that enables funders to learn, connect and act with impact. And that was just my entrance into better understanding those types of relationships and ultimately finding my tech. So do you have anything else to add in terms of grant, like just our, our introduction to grants management software? When you're thinking about including grant management software in your program, truly take the time to assess what, assess what your needs are. Um, it seems like an obvious answer. And yet, when you start the process of researching what's out there, you see a lot of possibility. And recognizing the, the things that actually are most meaningful to you, the characteristics of a program or platform that align with your values, either personally or as a company, is I think extremely important. One of the things that we really appreciated about Benevity and the Benevity Grants platform is the fact that you, um, like the company itself was, uh, um, the, the company itself actually um, seemed to be chartering innovative approaches to grant making and grants itself and serving as an idea generator and a collaborator um, with the funding community. And we really appreciated that as a company that invests in new innovative solutions for the building construction industry. We want to partner with organizations in every context that align with our values. So this seemed like a wonderful partnership. Watch part two of our discussion on grants management software as we talk about implementation for your business. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in our next episode.